Here's part two of a small office electronics bench for a technician who normally does diagnostic repair service outside plan. Again, this one is serving two purposes and the aspect of it's going to be the backdrop for my YouTube videos as well as allow me to do some basic diagnostic work. I'm going to give you my opinion on just a couple of tools that you need in order to do some basic service, some basic diagnostic work inside your office without having to duplicate a bunch of different tools that you already have in your service truck. One of the things that we want to be able to do is measure over time. And in order to do that, you need some kind of device that allows you to do data logging. The Fluke 45 does do data logging, um, but I don't have it set up to do that yet. Apparently there's some free software out there that will allow you to uh, record the data that comes out the RS-232. So a multimeter that does data logging uh, is important so you can see how a device under test works over time. The Fluke 45 uh, is a dual display unit and it actually allows you to measure uh, two different things at once. For instance, voltage and current just using three leads. And to get that second display, you just hit second, tell it what you want to display in there, and then it displays it. If I need to do data logging, I'll typically use the 289. I have some less expensive ones that will do it, but the 289 allows me to actually get a pretty good graph on the, the built-in display that it has. I believe you can do 24 hours at one sample per second worth of data logging. I like to have a good power supply as well too. This X-Tech is a uh, 30 volt, I believe uh, three amp triple output DC power supply. So I can run 12 volts up to 500 milliamps off of one output and I can run up to 30 volts off another. So if I'm testing like a Wiegand reader and a control panel, I can have them isolated from each other and uh, regulated as well too. So I don't have to worry about any voltage drops. If you plan on replacing or repairing any components off a circuit board, having a soldering iron is pretty important. This particular soldering iron is the Heiko FX888. Uh, they have a newer version. I think this one's discontinued. They have a new, newer version that has a digital display and allows you to control the temperature uh, digitally, which I guess is nice if you need it to be that accurate. Having a couple different thicknesses of solder, solder wick and having a couple of different tips depending upon how big or small the items that you're working on. Uh, I carry one of these in my truck and uh, I use it maybe once every couple weeks and it gets hot really quick and holds its temperature. If you do any electromechanical work such as actuator arms that have a high current output, you may want to take a look at getting a high current output DC power supply. This particular uh, power supply is 30 amps uh, output at 13.8 volts. It's also good to have one of these in the field as well too if you have a device that's primarily pi powered under a battery and has a high current draw. This will isolate if you're having any battery problems. You can put this on it, run power to it, and uh, test the device and see if it uh, is working properly. So typically that's what I would have actually at my bench. A couple multimeters so I can measure voltage and current at the same time. The ability to do some basic repairs and replace components if need be if I find a, a circuit board that has a bad component and it's worth replacing. 
and a couple different sources of power. So for instance, uh, DC power, power 90% of the stuff that I need. But if you have a camera that only operates on AC, then having some AC power supplies at different voltages around helps as well too. So again, this is not a proper electrical or electronic or electromechanical test bench. This is something that I would have set up at my desk in an office in case I need to test something over time or replace a small component. So let's take a look at some of the other stuff I got on my bench and we'll talk about it as we go. This is, I uh, believe, a rock and sock drum chair that has the wheels and the backrest on it. And I, I got it for being able to shoot videos so there was nothing over my shoulders or anything like that. But it's also a comfortable lab chair in case you got to move around. One of the next videos that I do is going to be picking a butt set. And uh, here's the Here's the subjects that I got set up, uh, a couple different butt sets from a couple different manufacturers. And I think I have one more butt set out in my truck that I'll, uh, I'll be bringing in to test. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other things that I've got over here. Let's see, there's an, an FM Systems rack uh, with, uh, I believe, eight GB464 uh, ground blocker equalizers for CCTV. They have four UTP inputs and four BNC outputs. Uh, that'll be a subject of uh, a review slash teardown. And right next to it, uh, that was a project that I was doing where I put a four channel DVR in an electrical box. So it was uh, covert and I'll probably do a review on that. Here's something old school for you. This is a US Robotics courier modem. Recently I've uh, been curious about connecting two modems directly together via a line simulator or a, a dumb line simulator. And uh, I've got that project over here on the bench. We'll look at it here in a second. But uh, I picked that up off of uh, Craigslist. It was brand new in the box. And I have another Sportster, what I call a Sportster modem, modem over here that I've been direct connecting to. This is some video equipment that I have. And this is how I'll be doing my overhead shots for now until I can come up with some permanent solution. I put this roll around cart behind me and put this tripod over my shoulder so you can get a, a an angle directly over my shoulder and see what I've got on the bench. All right, let's take a look at a couple things that I've got on the bench. Let's take a look at that line simulator I was talking about just now. I'm sure you can hear in the background the thunder. We're having some storms here in North Texas and we're expecting to have some tornadoes. But this is the line simulator that I was working on. It's hard to tell what it is from the, uh, the breadboard here. I'll give you a diagram. But basically what I've been doing is trying to connect two modems directly without a phone line, what would be called a leased line or dedicated line. So I'm generating voltage out of my uh, DC power supply I have a one microfarad cap and a 380 ohm resistor and that drops it down to about 20 uh, milliamps and allows me to communicate directly from one modem to the other um, via two terminals. When I do my butt set reviews, I'll probably get into that uh, circuit a little bit more in depth. But for now, that's one little project that I'm working on. Let's see what else we've got on the bench here. Uh, there's another butt set and Let's see, is that a video voltmeter or is that a camera master? Oh yeah, that's a uh, video voltmeter from FM Systems. I just got a camera master one for here in the bench. I carry a camera master two uh, in my service truck. And the main difference is that service, uh, the service master, the main difference is the uh, camera master two has uh, the ability to test for ground loops. And there's a camera that I was using as a test camera. There's an audio interface that uh, I was working on it had a bad cap in it and it's just one of those projects that I'm I'm trying to get to here's the hand tools that I have on my bench uh, just a bunch of can you see that uh, a bunch of needle nose pliers uh, RJ RJ 11 RJ 45 crimpers some wire marking tape various different screwdrivers uh, razor blades solder sucker solder sucker Another RJ11, RJ45 crimper, solderless terminal crimpers, good pair of scissors, magnifying glass, wire strippers. Let's see, got nut drivers, measuring tapes, levels. 
and I have a probe holder over here. It says Fluke on it. I don't know if actually Fluke makes this or they license their name out to somebody, but I picked this up on eBay for 12 bucks. I got this at Fry's Electronics and I like it a lot. It was one of two that I bought and I end up using this one. Uh, I may do a review on that later. Let's continue on with what we got on the bench. I got my Panavice vise with the uh, steel base. This is a Velamin ESD mat, and it's probably one of the less expensive ones out there. But I like it because it's white. Definitely need a glue gun for holding components down. Uh, clear conformal coating. A lot of people don't like these little cordless Dremels, but the batteries last a long time, and as long as you're not trying to get in some small place to, uh, to do some cutting, grinding, or, or smoothing something out, they're actually pretty cool and they're easy to use. Uh, got some wrenches that I was wanting to do a review on. Bank statement, which doesn't need to be there. All right, let's take a look at the first shelf and the stuff that I have on it. Obviously told you got the soldering iron, that's an FX888, uh, Fluke 45, X-Tech uh, uh, DC power, triple output DC power supply, pyramid power supply, some old circuit boards. Just looking for these leads forever. These are the leads for my uh, Agilent LCR that I carry in my truck and I couldn't find those. It's a Fluke I-410 current clamp. I always wanted one of these for a long time and then I realized that if you're using this to test current, you can't actually use your multimeter to test voltage. So I ended up buying a, a clamp meter. I'll get into that when I uh, review what multimeter outside plant technicians I recommend that they get. Uh, a couple circuit boards I was working on, gate operator circuit boards, Fluke T-Pack, thermal coupler, Fluke 289, Tektronix TX3, Fluke 16. It's probably one of my favorite multimeters. Not all that accurate. It was one of the first ones I bought, but uh, it does compass capacitance and uh, diode testing. And um, it just has two positions for the big switch in the middle. And uh, it does test te temperature, but it's not a true RMS meter. So it's somewhat accurate, but I guess it's my favorite because it was one of the first ones I got. Uh, Fluke probes, Arduino, I don't use that much. I don't have time for, for all the projects that I wanted to do on that. So that's a shelf number one. Pretty much from here over is what I, I recommend having on a small electronics test bench for your desk. Again, it's not a proper electronics test bench. It's not a proper electrical test bench, electromechanical test bench. It's what I would have inside my office just to do some basic diagnosing and testing equipment. All right, let's take a look at shelf number two. Got some handheld scanners, old school handheld scanner. You don't find too many handheld scanners that actually have AM, FM on them anymore. That's why I have this uh, Sony. And this is a digital trunking scanner that every once in a while, on days like today where we're having storms, I actually use. This is a TI Inspire calculator, but I have the TI-84 Plus keypad and operating system in there. So definitely need a calculator every once in a while. Power supply. Mega meter. This is a Subco M500. These are great if you ever have to test uh, loops or AC motors. They generate 500 volts and they go up to uh, a gig ohm. I've got a couple of those. I carry one in my truck as well as a uh, Fluke 1587 insulation tester. Just some other small little gate operator products. A four military Fluke 27, Camera Master 1, a Fluke 117, and x -Tech's idea of a, back in the day, I mean, it was probably great. I think it's like uh, 20 megahertz mini, mini scope. So I guess that's a small mini scope, but uh, it's just a little oscilloscope as well as a digital multimeter that tests voltage and current. Um, I got it for some reason one point in time and a tone probe down at the end. All right, let's go on to the third shelf up. Uh, Sorry about the bright light. It's what I use to actually light my bench and um, just gonna have to make do for right now. Got a bunch of different colored shrink tubing. Here's the microphone that I'm actually using. So sorry if I was banging on that, you can actually hear it. Broken Spicotech field test monitor. These are some of the multimeters that I have that are just extra that either I want to do a review on or that I've used in the past and just kept. 26.3, 27 FM, 70 series, uh, Fluke 12, 
a couple old clamp meters, a couple bad meters, a Milwaukee a multimeter, which I plan on doing a review, and then some other circuit boards that are for test. Here's one of the circuit boards I actually wanted to do a review on it. Actually, I wanted to do a review on, on the feature of it. This is Viking Electronics Enhanced Weather Protection Board, and uh, it has this really cool epoxy that's like four times as thick as the actual control board that covers the whole control board so if you have a uh, speaker phone or one of their devices that are outside or in harsh weather conditions this is the actual model to get they call it the ewp i think this was off a uh, viking i want to say e35 that uh, that i actually ended up swapping out they make a model now that uh, if you have a loud noise environment it controls the microphone level through one of the actual processors as opposed to uh, an analog trim pot. So I, I swapped it out and uh, used that model as opposed to this one and uh, kept these to, to do a little uh, demonstration on just how sick that, that, that coating is that protects it from, from weather. And they even go so far as to actually uh, put some kind of silicone or some kind of uh, goop on there to protect the connections that go in for power and for communication. I guess I don't need to do a review on that. That was pretty much all I wanted to say. That's as high as my tripod will go. So I'll just uh, show you some of the projects that I got. This was a little uh, speaker box that I was making for uh, a guitar preamplifier that I was building. Uh, XLPE wire for a test inductance loop that I want to do a tutorial on flute probes, a CLC bag that I want to do a tutorial on, and a radio frequency recorder that I want to do a demo on uh, to see if it'll actually record car remote and gate remote frequencies. And I haven't found any room for any components. I think I'm going to mount a, an organizer on that side and put all resistors, capacitors, ICs, all that stuff there. For right now, I have them in my closet back here. Let's take a quick look at the other shelves that I've got over here and see what's on them. Here's some of the books that I have here in my shop. Pretty much the standard stuff that you would expect to see. Uh, I'm trying to get my ham radio license, so I'm reading about that right now. Art Electronics. Uh, this uh, telephone electronics book's pretty cool. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about that when I do my butt set review. Um, Arduino book. This particular book, this Bodine Electric Company Small Motor Generator and Control Handbook, if you do anything in AC motors, this is a pretty cool book. I, I got this for free at uh, a, a little uh, book swap. I looked this up and they actually have this online at their website for free, Bodine Electric. Dan Sullivan's book, Fundamental Electronic Troubleshooting, is actually a pretty cool book. It's a, it's a 400 page book, but it'd probably take you just a few hours to read. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting, his take on electronic design and diagnosing uh, parts. Um, I think that's pretty much about it. Nothing else exciting. And let's see, on top here, gotta have, gotta have a hot air gun for testing components under hot air conditions and shrink tubing, PI-81, 83 calculators, a uh, little breakout test box with the on-off switch. And that's pretty much about it.